Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. In today's video, we have an awesome opportunity to take an in-depth look at the all-new mid-engine 8th generation Chevrolet Corvette. As with all of my reviews, I'll be covering all of the ins and outs of the car from powertrain and performance to pricing and options, interior features, how it drives, and of course, plenty of sound clips. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in, start her up, and let her run. The C8 will offer more personalization options than ever before. You have a choice between 12 exterior colors and 6 interior color themes, the latter of which include two-tone options as well. There's 6 seat belt colors as well as 2 optional stitch packages for even more contrast. This example is finished in Zeus Bronze Metallic and features the natural dipped interior with Napa leather and suede microfiber. Pricing for the 2020 Stingray, including destination, is $59,995. This example is loaded to the gills with nearly $23,000 worth of options, such as the 3LT and Z51 packages, magnetic ride control, a front end lift system, and more. The total MSRP for what you see here is $82,925. I love that this doesn't have the typical GM bong door chime. When I first started this up, I was like, oh man, that's kind of fancy. <laughs> it's one of many things that makes this car truly special. The heart of the 2020 Stingray is Chevy's next generation 6.2 liter small block V8, known as the LT2. It produces up to 495 horsepower at 6,450 RPM and 470 pound-feet of torque at 5,150 RPM. With the Z51 package, it can accelerate to 60 miles an hour in as little as 2.8 seconds and reach a top speed of 184 miles per hour. A standard launch control system, aided by the rear weight distribution, enables the new Stingray to get off the line quicker than any Corvette in history. The engine is built using a cast aluminum block with cast-in iron cylinder liners and nodular main bearing caps. The cylinder heads are cast aluminum too, featuring an overhead valve design with two valves per cylinder and dual variable valve timing. Fuel is delivered via direct injection with standard cylinder deactivation. When cruising, the engine will switch automatically from operating as a V8 to operating as a V4 to help conserve fuel. The compression ratio is 11.5 to 1. Oiling is achieved through a dry sump system, a first for an entry model Corvette. The system includes three scavenge pumps for improved track performance and supports lateral acceleration levels exceeding 1G in all directions. The detailing of the engine bay is awesome. It definitely has that supercar vibe to it. A glass panel on the rear hatch allows a clear view into the engine compartment. If you opt for the engine appearance package, LED lighting is added along with carbon fiber closeout panels on either side of the engine. In addition to the familiar weather, tour, sport, and track driving modes as seen on the C7, two new modes have been added to the mix, My Mode and Z Mode. My Mode is a configurable setting that allows you to personalize various vehicle parameters such as steering and suspension to suit your driving style. Z Mode was named after the Z06, ZR1, and Z51 performance package. It basically takes the My Mode configurations one step further to allow for engine and transmission adjustments. With each drive mode, the reconfigurable digital cluster changes its layout. I'm particularly fond of the track layout. The LT2 is paired with an all-new 8-speed dual-clutch transmission. 
developed in conjunction with Tremec, it's a monumental improvement over the torque converter equipped 8-speed auto that was offered in the C7. Of course, the biggest downside for some is going to be the lack of a manual transmission option. The C7's 7-speed with selectable auto rev match was just fantastic. As much as I enjoy rowing my own gears, the DCT is one of the most exhilarating automatics I've driven in quite some time. It delivers lightning fast shifts and excellent power transfer. The shift algorithm constantly monitors your driving style and senses when you're driving spiritedly so, regardless of the drive mode, it'll deliver the best performance for any given situation. An electronic limited slip differential is integrated into the transaxle to modulate torque between the rear wheels to increase stability and control. The DCT is operated by a collection of buttons and toggle switches in the center console. There's no mechanical interface between the controls and the transmission, just two pull toggles for reverse and drive and push buttons for park, neutral and manual. There's a pair of large metal paddle shifters behind the steering wheel if you wanted to shift gears yourself. One cool trick is that, when driving down the road, you can hold down the left paddle and the DCT will immediately downshift to the lowest possible gear for more rapid acceleration response. The DCT has a very low first gear in order to leverage additional traction to get the car off the line quickly while gears 2 through 6 are more close ratio to keep the engine near its peak power on the track. The tall 7th and 8th gears make for easier long distance cruising with low mechanical stress and pretty good fuel economy overall. Speaking of, EPA estimates for the 2020 Stingray range between 15 miles per gallon in the city and 27 miles per gallon on the highway. Premium fuel is required. In mixed daily driving, I achieved around 20 miles per gallon. Total tank capacity is 18.5 gallons. The removable target top is easy enough to operate by yourself. It's locked in by three latches, two above the visors and one at the back. With the three latches released, the top can be lifted upward. The nicest part about this is that the top can be kept in the car just in case you run into some rain. The trunk compartment behind the engine has specific inserts that the top sets in, nice and secure. Now for the next handful of clips, I'm going to leave the exhaust valves open, I'll get a few sets of revs at different angles around the car. Currently, the Stingray is available with four wheel options, including two different styles that each have two different finishes. 
The Silver 5 Trident spoke wheels shown here are optional. All wheels measure 19 by 8.5 inches in front and 20 by 11 inches in the rear. With the Z51 package, the standard Michelin Pilot Sport ALS All Seasons are replaced by Pilot Sport 4S summer tires. They offer a ton of grip and ride surprisingly well. They don't transmit much road noise either, which is nice. Chevrolet has introduced a new brake by wire system for the C8 known as E-Boost. Compared to a traditional vacuum-based power brake system, there's a significant weight and space advantage. When you press the pedal, the system is signaling a computer to transfer your intended stopping force via traditional brake fluid. Apparently, this is one of the reasons why they were able to give the C8 so much trunk space. Via the drive modes, you can modulate brake pedal feel whether you're looking for everyday type behavior, a more aggressive feel, or smooth modulation at the limit for trail braking on the track. In normal driving, I didn't feel there were any noticeable differences from the traditional brake setup on the C7, which is a good thing. The adjustability is pretty sweet. The brakes on Z51 cars are a bit bigger. The front discs measure 13.3 by 1.18 inches, while the rears measure 13.8 by 1.06 inches. Four piston monoblock calipers can be found at each corner. All discs are internally ventilated. An electronic rear parking brake is standard. The mid-engine architecture creates an entirely new ride and handling characteristic. There's an updated electronic steering system with a quicker 15.7 to 1 ratio. With the cab forward layout, the steering shaft is much shorter and 50% stiffer compared to the C7. I will say the squared off two spoke small diameter steering wheel might seem weird at first but it's one of my favorite parts of the drive. It allows an unobstructed view of the 12 inch reconfigurable cluster display. The steering wheel is power adjustable for both tilt and reach. Heat functionality is offered in 2LT and 3LT trims. The Stingray is so incredibly nimble and precise. Inputs yield an immediate response with great feedback. The lower positioning of the hood, instrument panel, and steering wheel allow for excellent forward visibility. Underpinning the car is a short, long arm, double wishbone suspension with forged upper and cast aluminum lower arms and monotube shock absorbers. The biggest difference over the C7 is the deletion of the transverse mounted composite leaf springs at each axle. This example is equipped with Magnetic Selective Ride Control 4.0, which reads the road better to provide more precise data through suspension mounted accelerometers. The improved electronics respond faster and more smoothly to driver inputs and contribute to class leading ride quality. This is by far the best riding sports car I've ever driven. Better even than a lot of sports sedans out there. Even in sport mode, the suspension is taut yet smooth. Chevrolet somehow found the perfect balance in ride quality. It's downright comfortable. I'm impressed to say the least. Like the C7, a performance traction management system is available for fine tuning of the stability and traction control systems. One of the neatest optional features though is the front suspension lift. If you'd like to gain some extra clearance for a speed bump, just press the button in the center console and the front of the car will raise 40 millimeters in 2.8 seconds. It operates at speeds up to 24 miles per hour and can be programmed to work automatically through GPS to remember up to 1,000 locations. The C8 is an engineering marvel, especially considering its sub $60,000 starting price. I've had a lot of people ask me what I think of it and how it compares to the C7. Having driven all of the C7s from the base Stingray to the ZR1, I can honestly say that the C8 is a different beast altogether. It's a hard comparison to make. Moving the engine out back in a lot of ways has created a more thrilling, albeit different experience. You get the feeling like you're driving something far more exotic, of course without the exotic price tag. Considering that this is just the entry model Stingray, I can only imagine how nutty things are going to get with future performance variants. 
For now, if you wanted to take things further than what a standard Stingray offers, Chevrolet is continuing to offer the Z51 Performance Package, which comes at a $5,000 premium. It includes specific suspension tuning with manually adjustable threaded spring seats, larger brake rotors with Z51 logos on the calipers, a heavy-duty cooling system, specific gearing, front brake cooling inlets, a performance exhaust, and an electronic limited slip differential. The Z51 package also adds a unique front splitter and an open two-piece rear spoiler. Together, they help generate an additional 400 pounds of downforce for improved grip when cornering. The C8 is a tad heavier than the C7, but considering how the C8 makes an additional 35 horsepower or so, the pounds per horsepower equation pretty much equals out. About 60% of the car's weight now resides over the rear wheels, which definitely helps get power to the ground more efficiently while also improving handling. The cab forward positioning places the car's center of gravity close to the driver's inside hip. The aluminum body structure uses more high-pressure die castings than any other GM vehicle to date. They were able to minimize the number of joints within the structure to improve overall stiffness by 10% over the C7. Reducing body flex improves ride and handling by allowing the suspension to more precisely control the car's movements. The car's backbone has also been completely redesigned for added strength while maintaining relatively low rocker panels. The interior of the C8 boasts a greater emphasis on quality and craftsmanship. It's very futuristic. I always thought the C7's interior was really nice, but this car is just on a whole new level. The 3LT package by itself is about a $12,000 option. The most significant part of it is the addition of hand-wrapped cut-and-sew leather with thick press stitching throughout the interior. The leather fully wraps the dash, doors, and center console. The upper areas of the interior, such as the windshield header and roof, are finished off in suede microfiber. The generous use of raw metals is a really nice touch, and I love the stainless steel speaker grills. They're added when opting for the Bose Performance Series audio system. If you look closely at the grill in between the seats, the perforations are in the shape of the flag emblem. The Stingray is available with three different seat styles depending on trim. The GT1 seats are standard on the 1LT and 2LT. They offer 8-way power adjustments for the driver and passenger. The GT2 seats shown here are optional on the 2LT and standard on the 3LT. They have a more race-inspired look and more aggressive bolstering without compromising on long-term comfort. They also feature carbon fiber trim, higher quality leather upholstery, jet black painted seat backs, lumbar support, adjustable side bolsters, and three-stage heating and cooling. Both the driver and passenger get memory settings. The ergonomics take some time to get used to, especially the vertical climate controls, but everything is pretty self-explanatory. As expected, rearward visibility isn't that great. However, Chevrolet has a solution for that. A rear camera mirror, standard on the 2LT and 3LT. It gives you a high definition look out over the rear deck lid. Not only that, but it can be zoomed in and even adjusted up or down for the best view possible. The Stingray is offered with either a standard 10-speaker Bose Premium Audio System or a 14-speaker Bose Performance Series Audio System. I'm not sure of the wattage of the latter, but it packs enough punch to shake the interior. The all-new infotainment system is faster, simpler, and is a higher resolution display. It packs all of the typical features, including Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. The capacitive touch display is quick to respond to inputs and offers a layout that's very much like a smartphone. The system also supports a variety of popular apps. Navigation is of course included, along with all of the media options you could ask for. You can even access the entire owner's manual and toggle through various angles of the 360-degree camera system. 
Chevrolet's performance data recorder is also included, just like the C7, but it's undergone a significant makeover with a high-resolution camera and a streamlined user interface. Along with being able to record both circuit and point-to-point -point road courses, the PDR can be set to auto-record like a dash cam that'll start every time the car is running or when valet mode is enabled. Another one of the features included with the 3LT is a heads-up display. The controls are on the left-hand side of the dash and the image is beamed up onto the windshield. It has a lot of vital information and the layout changes with the various drive modes. On the steering wheel you have things like cruise control, radio controls, hands-free telephone, and voice commands. The toggles on the far right though allow you to go through a very detailed driver's information system. One thing that's pretty cool, if you didn't want to be distracted by all of the different stuff at night, you can simplify the cluster to just show the bare minimum of information. As far as storage space, obviously it's a tighter interior so you don't have a whole lot of places to put things, but you do have two cup holders, a little bit of console space, a wireless phone charger in between the seats, door pockets, and a pretty decent glove box. The glove box lid is damped so it opens up kind of slow, but I wish it was a little bit slower because it does tend to come down and hit your legs. As far as safety, the Corvette has dual stage front airbags in front and combination head and thorax airbags mounted in the sides of the seat. Rear cross traffic alert, rear park assist and side blind zone alert are also standard. Power and handling is one thing, but when you really get down to it, the C8 is decently practical. With any mid-engine car, you would expect to have some trunk space in the front, and the C8 does. It's a good bit, actually. But they've also managed to get quite a bit of trunk space out back. Up front, though, you have LED illumination, a 12-volt power outlet, some small cargo hooks, and access to your brake fluid and windshield washer reservoirs. Out back, there's enough space to actually fit two sets of golf clubs. There's a cargo net, extra illumination, you pretty much get the picture. Chevrolet also offers a custom fitted set of luggage so you can really maximize the space. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the 2020 Chevrolet Corvette. Don't forget to leave a like below, it really helps the video a lot, and if you haven't subscribed already, consider doing so because there's always a lot more content where that came from. I'll see you guys on the next one. Take care.